Hello, I am here to make a video to show you how to program a certain kind of thing. A kind of thing like the thing you see behind me, which is, oh, I have to stand still for this to happen. But um, what you see behind me is a flocking system. There are all of these little squares floating around the screen. And what they're doing is they're picking up pixel values, color values from a camera that's in front of me and smearing those colors onto the screen. So this is a project that I actually, I think that I made around 14 years ago. I'm running an updated version of it that runs in processing. And what I'm going to do is show you how to actually make something like this happen in the browser using JavaScript, P5.js, HTML5 Canvas. Um, so let me just mention a few other things about this that you'll see is that, so if I, if I click the mouse here, which um, I'm now I'm clearing the background, and what you'll see is they're just all of these squares moving around the screen. Now they're using this kind of like bees swarming, insects swarming sort of kind of like motion, and you can see that's what the camera is actually seeing up behind me. And so if I let go of the mouse, instead of clearing the background, these agents will just simply uh, you know, keep drawing those colors, but their, their trails are being revealed. So how, does, how do you program something like this? Let's, so I'm going to close this down, I, um, and I'm going to minimize processing here, and I've got a P5.js example that I'm going to start with. And the example just has a couple things. It has a live video, and it has a single particle. Now, this particle comes from a previous video that I will magically have an annotation pop up that references, where I showed you how to have something move around the screen and draw a trail of itself. And you can see here, and it's going to move randomly. So, the you know, in the swarming thing, they're swarming like insects. Here, it's just going to move randomly, but. If you decide to take this example and do something with it, you might think of different kinds of motion, spiral, et cetera, whatever that you might think of doing. So let me run this particular example right here. And you can see this is all it is. You can see that there is a video DOM element giving me a sort of low resolution image of myself that I can use to pick up pixel colors. And there is a thing moving around the screen randomly, a single particle. So the first thing that I want to figure out how to do is how do I have this particle actually grab colors from that video. And, um, so notice that I say video.loadPixels. Um, one thing that I'm going to do just right now for a second is put background back into draw. And I'm going to run this again. So you can see this is what's happening. So what I want is for that particle to be colored according to what's in the video. So this is actually kind of an easy thing to do, surprisingly enough. <sighs> In the particle object itself, notice how it gets a fill color which is always 255, 150. So it's white with a little bit of alpha. But I don't want this to be 255. Rather, what I want is to get some sort of color from the video. Dot get, this dot x, this dot y. So this is kind of the idea here. What I want is I have the canvas with a particle moving around. And I have this particular video with a portrait you know, of myself. So this particle should look up the corresponding color in the video and set its fill. And this particle's location is at this.x, this.y. So I should be able to just say, give me the pixel value at this.x, this.y in the video. Only I can't, right? Because if you notice, this canvas is actually 640 by 480. And my video is actually 40 by 30. So what I need to do is I need to scale down. So wherever the particle is, it's x and y. I need to scale it down, dividing by 16 to find the corresponding pixel value in the video. So let's come back over here and do that. So what I think could be useful is to get, make another variable. I'm going to call it px for like pixel x. I just made a weird like arm motion that I don't know what it means, pixel x. <laughs> um, px, and I'm going to say this.x divided by v scale. If you remember, v scale is a variable that I have that keeps track of how big is the canvas relative to the video. And I'm going to make another variable called py, which is this.y divided by v scale. And I'm going to say, now give me the color at px, py. Now there's a slight issue. P5, I wonder if P5 actually doesn't care. Let's keep going. There's an issue, which is that I might get the number 4.79831255, which is not a valid pixel value. Pixel values are only whole numbers, integer values. Pixel 4, pixel 7, there's no pixel 7 and a half. So I might need to add something to this to correct that, but let's just sort of see at least what happens. Now, what is in this variable col? Let's just see if this even works. And I'm going to add console.log. The color. And I'm, by the way, I'm not using the word color 
Even though I have a variable that's describing a color, color, the word color is a keyword in P5. It's an actual function. So I'm just saying COL for kind of short for color. So let's now go back and run this again. We have a view of our console here. We can see I'm only ever getting black. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I don't think it should be black. Uh, 00255. So let's go and let's add this thing that I want to add, which maybe will fix it, saying floor. So what floor does is it takes any number that might be a decimal number and lops off that decimal number. So 3.8 becomes 3, 3.3 becomes 3, 3.9 becomes 3, 7.2 becomes 7. Just takes that and gives me a nice integer whole number, which is what I need. And let's run this again. It's still getting only black here. Oh, no, there we go. It just took a minute for the video to like come alive. So you can see this is working and that it's pulling out color values. You can see they're all very green because it's probably wandering around the green screen behind me. So what can I do now? I should be able to say, and notice, by the way, that this is an array. So the get function gives you a single pixel and it gives you an array, a red, green, blue, and alpha value. So what I can do is I can say now, fill, now fill the red value. There's a bunch of different ways I could do this, but, and this might be sort of a silly way, but I'm just going to say, let me actually now take the red, green, and blue values to color that particular. And I can take out console.log. I can run this again, and you can see, come alive, video. You can see, look, it's green. <laughs> and you can see if my face gets in there. There we go, it's picking up colors. So good, we're getting somewhere. Now, let's go back to sketch.js. Let's, let's take out background and draw, and put background back in setup. And you can see now it is going to start painting me if I stood very still, but rather slowly. And who knows how long and how patient we can be here to kind of do this. So what, it, what we might make this better is to have a lot of these in the window. So, what I think would make more sense is for me to make an array called particles. Let's start with 100 of them. And let's say particles index i equals a new particle. So instead of having a single variable particle, let's have an array of particles. Let's make a whole bunch of them. And then everything, I can do a loop here through all the particles. And just say particles index i, update particles index i, show. And now I can run this again. And we can see, there we go. As I move around, you can see I'm kind of getting this like very pointillist like portrait of myself. Now there is no swarming, there is no flocking, it's just random motion. Also these particles, they're leaving the window, they're gone forever. Let's see if we can just make a few improvements to this, at least to keep it a bit more stable. So one thing that I think is kind of important here um, and might be worth, it might be worth actually making like a little slider for this. I'm going to add a slider. Uh, is that that alpha value is going to make a big difference in uh, what it looks like. So alpha goes between 0 and 255. Let's start in the middle at 127. And so I'm going to make a slider and then I'm just going to take this alpha value, alpha value and have it be the value of that slider. So we can sort of see what happens here with like less alpha, you know, no alpha, like uh, less, more alpha, <laughs> I don't know, what is it? You can get that, so it's fuzzier or harsher. So that's one thing that's sort of important to see. The other thing that I think might be good to do is add some kind of constraints, like uh, this dot x equals constrain, it's valued between zero and width. I could probably come up with a better solution, <laughs> this dot y, zero dot height. So I don't ever want it to leave the window. Um, so I want to keep it always on in the window. And so we can see now, uh, and they're all starting from the middle. Maybe I should, maybe I want to have them all start from, uh, you know, a random spot in the window. Just, uh, so let's do that. So you can see here, and uh, now that's working. Let's see what happens if now I <laughs> go and uh, make 500 of them. This is even going to run. Come video. So you can see well, there's an issue here, which is like 
performance is a bit of an issue. Even though I have so many more now that I'm kind of more quickly seeing the image resolve, whether or not I want that, I don't know, but it's running rather slow. So there is a limit to how much we can really draw on canvas. Let's try 200 and see if it's kind of a smoother animation. There we go. So 200 seems pretty good. Another thing that I might add to this, I'm gonna stop and is uh, maybe a variable for uh, size. So I'm drawing them all as a 24 by 24, but maybe I should make a random size between like four and 32. And uh, so each one of these particles will actually be a different size, um, which it might be kind of an interesting effect to have sort of like smaller dots and larger dots. I don't know if that's really helpful. I'm gonna try to stand still for a second. Um, you get the idea, I could keep going with this. So what I would say, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a few things that I wanna mention here. Number one is, um, there's a couple things that I'm doing in the, in the original example that I showed you that maybe I won't add right now, but I'll mention. One thing that, you might, that, that can be an issue is that if you have, depending on what your motion is, if you have a particle that's here, and then the next frame it's over here, there's gonna be this sort of jump. So one thing that I did do in, that you could consider doing is wherever the particle moves to, also draw particles in between them so you always get this continuous line. You could also use actually just the line function and keep track of its previous location and its current location. That's one thing that you might consider. The other thing that you might consider is averaging color over time. So let me, let me, let me explain what I mean by this. So let's say there is, uh, this is the figure that the camera is seeing, and this is the particle and it's moving this way. And this is the painting that it's making. So, and this is a red sweater and this is a black background. What you're going to see based on what I've done here is red, 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 black, right? This being that edge. The particle is going to instantly change to the next color because it's literally drawing the color it sees with the pixel. But if every time it moves, you just average in a little more color, then that creates a smearing effect. So what you would see instead is red, 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 a little less red, a little less red, a little less red, blacker, 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 black, 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 red, a little more red. So it's going to average the color as it's moving. So in order to do that, what you would need is for your particle object to actually store a color and when you get the color from the video to average that new color with the color that it's storing. So I'll leave that as an exercise. I mean, I'll try to post an example that does that. There's actually a P5 function called lerp color that will do this math of averaging for you that you could look at using. Uh, boy, I really kind of want to add it right now, but I'm not going to. Um, but, and then the other thing I would say is to really think about is what is the motion. So, you know, if I go back really quickly, just we remind ourselves what this looks like with the background on, right? You can see this is, this is the motion of my particles that are painting the image. But what if all the particles just move left and right or up and down, or they use a flocking system, or they're all bouncing off of each other, or they're all spiraling around? So what are some other ways that you can think of how those brush strokes are created? And in addition, like, are you just drawing circles? Are you smearing like, you know, image textures or rectangles? There's a lot of possibilities here. So think about all those possibilities, maybe make some sort of painting thing, pixel, whatever, and uh, share it with me on Twitter or in the comments and uh, ask your questions and I look forward to see what people make. Under 50 minutes, thank goodness. Okay.